Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from Jeremy and it's about coolant. Uh, first place that we just started is what's the difference between blue and green coolant? Yeah, this I, I honestly did not realize that there was this much of a question out there, but it is a good question, uh, which is what is the difference between the blue and the green? The blue coolant from Subaru, their super long life, came out and started to be put in, put in cars in 2008. Prior to that, all the cars uh, just used the standard green coolant. Green coolant is not premixed, so you have to mix it with water. The blue coolant is premixed. Uh, but they're, they are both ethylene glycol-based coolants. You can mix the blue and the green, nothing bad happens. Um, but the, the biggest difference is that one is premixed and one is not. Now, where this comes from is you're not supposed to use tap water to mix with the, with the full-strength coolant. But most people do. You know, I've, I've done it in the past. The, what, the problems that you can get into with using tap water to mix with coolant is... For one, sometimes tap water has got like minerals and stuff in it that are not ideal for being in the coolant. But it turns out also that the pH of the water that comes out of the tap can vary as well. And that can cause some issues with the coolant. So like you're supposed to use distilled water, but I think Subaru realized in part that a lot of people don't do that. Um, the other part of it was they were trying to, like 2008, that's when all of a sudden the, the cost of ownership of a car started to be something that was uh, factored into the ratings, new car new car ratings, new car satisfaction. So they were trying to extend services out further and further. So the blue coolant is premixed by Subaru, so they, they know that it's exactly right, that it's the right water, right pH, all that sort of stuff. And that's why they say it basically only needs to be changed at 100,000 miles. The green coolant uh, that was full strength and that we were left to mix it with whatever water we decided, that has a service interval of 30,000 miles. So... Basically, that's the difference. It's one is premixed by Subaru, one has a much longer service interval um, than the other and because it was premixed by Subaru. As far as when it comes down to mixing blue and green coolant, the one thing you gotta keep in mind is the green coolant, if you have any green coolant at all in your cooling system, you have to follow the green coolant's change interval, which is 30,000 miles. If your car came with blue coolant and you keep blue coolant in it, then that's when you could potentially utilize that 100,000 mile service interval. But if you ever basically have to top up with anything other than that pre-mixed blue coolant, then that would drop the service interval back to the 30,000 mile interval. So nothing bad will happen if you mix the green and the blue together, but if you are using any anything other than just the 100% pre-prepared blue coolant, then you cannot use the blue coolant's service interval, and you've got to. You, you might have to do a complete flush, um, and it, just to make sure that you you can get anything out, anything non-blue coolant out, so that you can refill with 100% blue coolant to get back to that service interval. Subaru also introduced something called cooling system conditioner. What's that about? All right, so the cooling system conditioner came out a little bit before turbocharged cars landed here in the U.S. This was what what brought it about was you know the very late 90s early 2000s with the 2.5 liter engines and maybe some of the 2.2 Subaru was using a composite head gasket it was not a multi-layer multi-layer still head gasket and they were having some issues with those so the cooling system conditioner came out basically it, it's stop leak it, it they don't it advertises a stop leak but that's effectively what it is and it was to try and help curb some of these head gasket issues that they were having with these composite head gaskets. But I guess where I, where I will, most I will say about it is, it is not for any turbocharged car because they have multi-layer steel head gaskets. So what if I wanted to run water and water wetter instead of the blue or the green coolant? Um, and, and for a lot of motorsports applications, that that's what we end up having to do because you cannot run you know, uh, a glycol-based coolant uh, just because it can be dangerous on track if, if you have a leak or anything like that. Um, we've had a lot of good luck running water and water wetter. Water alone, um, you, you really want a little bit something, uh, something in there as a corrosion inhibitor, especially in an aluminum engine. Um, water wetter has that, and then there, water wetter is basically a detergent to break down the surface tension of the water to get better 
contact with the metal surfaces. It, it can work really, really well. There's other additives other than the water wetter, uh, redline water wetter that we've used. I think they're all very similar. Um, we, we've just always stuck with water wetter because that's what we've always used, but there are other ones out there. I'd say it's it definitely can work really well. If you've watched all of our stuff about radiator caps and raising the boiling points and stuff like that, in, in part, that's one of the reasons that we've gone down that path because we're using water, because water itself has just its natural boiling point. When you add coolant into it or a, a coolant mixed with water has a much higher native boiling point because of all, all of the extra ingredients in the coolant. Um, so the, that would be the one thing to be aware of is just that you, the, the native boiling point of water is lower than coolant. Um, so you just might, might want to keep an eye on that. And then also you, you just might want to um, only, I would say for, for most applications, you would only want to want, run water in your cooling system when you were competing. And then you'd want to put coolant back in afterwards because of its, you know, just corrosion and hit, uh, prevention and stuff like that um, versus just the straight water. Because long term, if you leave just water in your cooling system long term, um, you can start to see rust and stuff form in, in some of like the metal pipes and stuff like that. Well, hopefully that answers your questions about coolant, everything coolant related. We've got other videos about cooling system, radiator caps, everything you want to know. If you have more questions, hit us up on Instagram or drop it in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. Appreciate your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned with Flatterms Tuning.